Gummy the frog lives in a beautiful garden. Everyone there makes fun of him. Nobody plays with him. <laughs> One day, Gummy becomes so depressed that he runs away. He enters a house and hides under a boy's bed. The boy's mother comes in and looks at his homework. Tommy, you don't have good grades, she tells the boy. Don't you want to become a smart boy? The boy, on the other hand, doesn't work hard at all. He's so lazy that one day all the alphabets and numbers in the books slid off their pages. Gummy is still hiding beneath the boy's bed. When he sees all the letters and numbers, he jumps with joy. I'll learn all of them, he says. Then I'll become smart. And no one will make fun of me. The letters and numbers are dusty from not being used for so long. Gummy cleans them all. With the help of the letters, Gummy learns how to spell and write. The numbers help Gummy learn how to count and do math. Gummy studies hard over the next month, and now Gummy can read like an expert. Uh oh! One day, the boy's mother discovers Gummy in the house. He has no choice but to depart. Gummy, on the other hand, has already learned a lot and continues to learn at the garden. Gummy can read, write, and do math, say the other frogs. Wow, can you teach us, Gummy? Oh, sure, my friends. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The next day, Tommy opens his notebook. What? Where are all the numbers and letters? He screams. He doesn't know that Gummy took all the letters with him and is now the smartest in the garden. There was a dog that was very hungry. He searched for food everywhere. And at last, he found a bone. He picked the bone with his mouth and started going back to his home. There was a river bridge on the way to his home. When he started crossing the bridge, he saw his reflection in the water. The dog thought that there was another dog with a bone in the water. He wanted to get that other bone too. So he started barking at his own reflection. Uh oh! His bone fell in the water as soon as he opened his mouth. The greedy dog lost his bone. Moral of the story don't be greedy, greed will cause pain. Hi, I am Elephanti, your learning partner. Today we will learn about what's a good touch and what's a bad touch. Let's learn together. Hi, Hema. Hi, Ajay. <laughs> hey, hi. There are so many people whom we love. We all love to be cuddled and touched by our loved ones. But, uh, you know, sometimes I feel sad when some people touch me. I don't know why. I feel confused and sometimes feel guilty. This is how your body responds to bad touch. Sweaty brow. 
start to cry. Need to go to the toilet. Heart beats fast. Feel sick in the tummy. Wobbly legs. Have you ever felt that? You know, some people are bad. They will make you sad by touching you. So then I came to know that there are good touches and bad touches. Yeah, Mama told me about that. Who is your best friend? Is it Mama or Dada? For some of them, it's their teachers. Yes, whoever you trust, you can share. So, what did Mama tell you? She said, there are some parts of our body that should not be touched by others. Yeah, those are our private parts, the parts under our swimsuits. The chest, the parts between our legs and our bottom. Don't, Don't let, let others, others touch, touch those parts unless it's your mom or dad during bathing. Or when a doctor examines you in the presence of your parents. Your, your body belongs to you. Okay, if someone gives a bad touch, what will you do? Scream a big, fat, strong no and get away fast to a safer place. Be a hero by saying no to bad touch. Thank goodness! The arrows miss me! I am safe! Someone has attacked the forest! I must tell the king! Are you the king? Asked the rabbit. No, I am not the king! Someone has attacked us! I must tell the king! Well then, I will go with you! Said the rooster. Are you the king? Asked rabbit and rooster. No, I am not the king, said Ostrich. Someone has attacked us. We are going to tell the king. Well then, I will go with you. Are you the king? Asked Rabbit, Rooster, and Ostrich. No, I am not the king, said Elephant. Someone has attacked us. We are going to tell the king. Well then, I will go with you. Are you the king? Asked Rabbit, Rooster, Ostrich, and Elephant. No, I am not the king, said the monkey. The king is inside. Wait! So, this was not an attack? Rabbit asked. Some of my arrows missed their mark. The king grinned. Everyone laughed. Once upon a time, there lived a huge elephant in the jungle. The elephant was very proud of his strength and his body. And he used to get angry over small things and always troubled other small creatures. In the same forest, there lived a family of ants. They were a hard-working family who would always go together to gather food. One day, as they were walking, the big, mean elephant threw water on them. The queen ant got very angry. Why are you troubling us? She asked. We need to gather food before the season. But the elephant shouted at the ant, Keep quiet or I will walk over your silly creatures. The next day, the ants noticed a sleeping elephant. The queen ant thought of teaching him a lesson. She quietly climbed onto the elephant's trunk. Once inside, she started biting the elephant. The elephant shouted because of pain. He tried everything but couldn't get the ant to stop biting him or come out of his trunk. Such an enormous elephant became useless in front of a tiny ant. The elephant pleaded to the ant to stop biting. 
The ant stopped and said, I hope you now know how others feel when you hurt them. The elephant said, Yes, I do. Please stop now. The ant stopped and came out of his trunk. The elephant apologized to the ant and its family. I feel terrible about what I did. I am sorry. It's okay. Let's be good friends. No worries, the queen happily said. From that day onward, the elephant never troubled any creature, and they lived all as good friends. Moral of the story, never underestimate and hurt anyone. Always be kind. Once a wolf was very hungry. It looked for food here and there. After a bit, he saw a billy goat feeding in a meadow. So he went up to him and said, Mr. Billy Goat, Mr. Billy Goat, I'm going to eat you. But the billy goat answered, Who are you? I am a wolf, and I'm looking for a good dinner, said the wolf. Billy Goat looked at him from head to toe. No, you're not a wolf. You're a dog. No, I'm not a dog, he said. I'm a wolf. Well then, answered the billy goat, if you're a wolf, stand at the bottom of the hill and open your jaws wide. Then I'll run down the hill and jump straight into your mouth. All right, said the wolf. So he stood at the bottom of the hill and opened his mouth wide. Then he ran down the hill very fast and hit the wolf with his horns as hard as he could. The wolf rolled over, knocked senseless with the blow, while the billy goat ran off home. And there lay the wolf, with all his bones aching. Well, what a fool I must have been, thought he. Whoever saw a billy goat jump into one's mouth of his own free will? Then the hungry wolf continued walking, and after a bit he saw a horse walking in a meadow, nibbling the grass. So he went up to him and said, Mr. Horse, Mr. Horse, I'm going to eat you. But the horse answered, Who are you? I am a wolf. You think again, answered the horse. You're only a dog. No, I am not a dog, he said. I'm a wolf. Oh, if you are sure you're a wolf, it's all right. Only because I am not very big yet. You should start with my tail, and meanwhile, I'll be munching some more grass and get a little fuller. So the wolf went up to him from behind and was just going to get his tail. The horse pushed as hard as he could at him with his strong foot and ran off while the wolf rolled over. The wolf cried, Well, wasn't I a fool? Who ever heard of anyone starting to eat a horse by the tail? And so he wandered on further when after a bit he saw a pig coming towards him. So when he got to him, he said, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, I'm going to eat you. But the pig answered, Who are you to eat me? I'm a wolf. I don't think so, answered the pig. You're only a dog. No, I'm not a dog, he said. I'm a wolf. Oh, that's all right then, answered the pig. You just sit down on my back, I'll give you a ride, and then you can eat me. So the wolf took a seat on the back of the pig, relaxed. The pig carried him straight into the village, and all the dogs ran out, made a dash for the wolf, and began to tease him. They teased him so much, it was all he could do to tear himself away and run off back into the forest. The Thirsty Crow Gaku Long, long ago, there was a crow named Kaku. Kaku loved to fly. One day, during the summer, Kaku decided to fly to the next village. While crossing the muddy, dry land, Kaku became tired and felt very thirsty. Kaku looked for water everywhere, and finally, he was able to find a pot with some water in it. Kaku tried to drink the water from the pot, but it was all at the bottom, and he couldn't reach it. Kaku tried to think of a way to get the water out of the pot. Suddenly, Kaku got an idea. 
he picked up some pebbles from here and there and put them one by one into the water. When he dropped each pebble, the water kept rising up and up inside the pot. And finally, the water reached to the top of the pot. Kaku flapped his wings with joy and drank the water. Wow, Kaku is smart, right? Yes. So where there is a will, there is a way. Once upon a time, there lived a mama goat and her seven little kids. They loved to play with the butterflies and birds. One day, a big bad wolf noticed these little kids playing in the meadow. Ha ha ha, I'm sure these would make a delicious dinner tonight. He waited for the moment, patiently hiding behind the bushes. My dear goodies, I'm going to the market to buy bread and cookies for you. I'll be back by evening. Listen, please remain aware of strangers or else you little ones would get into danger. Sure, mommy, we can take care of ourselves. Don't worry. The mother goat went off to the market and the kids locked the door and went to play. Hello, my children, open the door. Your mother is back. Mommy, mommy, she's back. It's not our mommy. She hasn't got such a rough voice. The wolf drank some honey. This would make my voice as soft as a mother. Hello, kids, your mother is back. Look what I have got for you. Cookies, breads, ice creams, and a lot of toys. Oh, that sounds like mother. Should we open the door now? Look down there. Our mother has not got orange feet, but white. This is surely the wolf. Go away, you big bad wolf. Kids, your mother is back. Yes, that sounds like our mother. And also the feet are white. We should open the door now. Not knowing what danger awaits them, all the kids ran to open the door. Hello, kids. Are you ready to become my feast tonight? When the mother returned, she was shocked to see the door open. The youngest one came out of his hiding place. Mommy, he ate up all my brothers and sisters. What will we do now? Don't worry, let's go and look for him. They went out searching for the wolf. His tummy was so filled up that he slept off in the meadow near the house. The mother goat got very quiet and went near him. She cut open his tummy and took out all her kids from his tummy. Then they filled up his tummy with stones. He slept all night till the morning. When he got up, he was so thirsty. When he bent down to drink water, he couldn't handle the weight in his stomach and fell. The kids and their mom lived happily ever after. The sky is falling. This is the story of a beautiful forest with lots of funny animals. Who is this? The funniest buddy rabbit. Look. Buddy is in his afternoon nap. <laughs> Our buddy just woke up and looked around. Nobody is there. What is this thunderous sound? <laughs> what is this thunderous sound? <laughs> and slowly looked above. He only saw the sky and the moving clouds. Ah! Ah! It is the sky! It's the sky! It's the sky! It's falling! He ran and ran with all his strength. Hi! Who is that? Dodo dear! Hey Dodo, run! The sky is falling! If you want to live more, run! Looks like the Dodo deer also got scared and he somehow ran with the Buddy Rabbit. Looks like Jackie the Fox couldn't find anything to eat. Poor Jackie. Okay, then just practice howling. Woo, woo, no, no, woo. Oh, come on, it's woo, woo. Oh, wow, wow. The food is searching for me, Jackie wondered. He took all his cutleries and sat ready to eat one of them. Ah, the sky is falling. Run, Jackie. 
It's not the time for food! Run! Ah! Really? So they ran and ran with all their energy. Oh, Bobo the tortoise just came out of the pond. Is she enjoying the wind? Yes, she is. What? 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 Why are you running? Didn't you see people on the way? Oh, all stopped running. They looked at each other, and then the buddy ran back to Bobo and started running. How nice he is, right? We should help our friends when they are in trouble, as the tortoise is a slow-moving creature. It cannot run fast. So Buddy carried him and ran. Then on the way, he saw Lucy the parrot. She was just swinging in a creeper. Oh, what is Buddy doing? He took Lucy. Why are you running? Because the sky is falling. So we are all running for our life. Okay then, why are you carrying me? Leave me, Buddy. I have wings, I can fly. Everybody stopped and laughed. <laughs> Run! Jackie the Fox said. Then again they ran and ran. Animals added up. The line grew bigger and bigger and bigger. Run! Run! Oh dear friends, run! If you want your life, then run fast, run! Sing along! Run, run, oh dear friends, run! If you want your life, then run fast, run! Okay, well done. Oh, who is this? Wow, the Lion King. He walked slowly from his cave, sat there, and roared. All the animals stopped running, scared a bit, and stood silently. What? What is it? Why are you running so fast? What's the matter? Everyone looked at each other and stood there. What to do? Then Danny the elephant came forward and said, Oh, Lion King, we're all running for our life because the sky is falling. We don't know what to do. And the whole world is under threat. What? What was that? The sky is falling? Ha <laughs> ha! What a stupid idea. Who said the sky is falling? Did you see it fall? No, I didn't. But Dolly said, it's falling. It's squeaky. It's Buddy, he said. Buddy, did you see the sky falling? Yes. Yes, I mean, I didn't see, but I heard a thundered sound, like the sky is coming down. Clouds in the sky, and suddenly I heard a series of sound, and I couldn't stay there, so I ran. Okay. Where did you hear that noise? In the berry land, near the apple tree. Hmm. Okay, let's see what it is. Lion King started walking. The animals were so scared. They looked at each other and didn't move. Walk you all. Follow me now. And the Lion King roared. Wow. Reached Berryland. <laughs> so fast. Okay, where is it, Sky? I cannot see any bits and pieces. Buddy, come forward. Where did you? All the animals got scared like anything. They cried. Stop you fools. Let's see what it is. Lion King walked forward a little and looked then again. He heard the noise. What? It's coming from the coconut tree. Lion King moved forward and looked above. What? It's Charlie. Charlie just came down by hanging his tail on the branch with a bunch of coconuts and just dropped. 
What? Buddy grinned. It's you, pal. Yeah, wow. Hi, everyone. <laughs> the lion laughed high. See? It's Charlie who was plucking coconuts and throwing them to the ground. When things show up, keep some patience to explore what it is. Don't rush into false ideas and decisions next time. Think before you jump to conclusions, okay? Okay. Everyone said with a smile. What? Charlie jumped onto the ground and everyone laughed. <sighs> wow, what a beautiful apple tree. It's serving the apples to rabbits, squirrels, birds, children and, and everyone. I wish I could be a big creature, but I don't know how. Huh. Oh, who is this boy? Where is she taking me? Oh no, he's going to keep me inside the soil. I'm scared. <laughs> uh, uh, it's all darkness around. Oh, the sun! I feel warm. Mm, the rain. I feel fresh. I'm growing bigger. Okay, I grew up because I got sunlight, water, air, and soil. Oh no! A worm! Someone save me! Phew! Thank you, little boy. Thank you, friends. I feel loved. I'm growing bigger and bigger into a strong apple tree. Hooray! searching for some water. While trying to drink water from the river, he slipped and fell into the river. Help me, please, help me. There was a dove sitting on a branch of a tree who saw the ant falling into the river. Oh no. The dove quickly plucked a leaf and dropped it into the river near the struggling ant. The ant moved towards the leaf and climbed up onto it. Soon, the leaf drifted to dry ground and the ant jumped out. He looked up to the tree and thanked the dove. Thank you, my dear friend. Later the same day, a hunter nearby about to hunt. And the ant was able to see oh, him no. and guess what he was about to do. The dove was resting and had no idea about the hunter. The ant quickly bit the hunter on the foot. And feeling this pain, the hunter dropped his bow and arrow and screamed. The dove noticed it and quickly flew away to a safe place. The dove thanked the ant for saving his life. 
Thank you, my dear friend. Moral of the story. If you do good, good will come to you. Four Friends and the Hunter Once upon a time, there lived a crow, a rat, and a tortoise. They were best friends. They played together, laughed together, and worked together. One day, they heard a strange sound. Birds were flying high. They watched. A deer was running fast and just fell in front of them. A hunter is falling to get me. I was trying to hide somewhere. Then suddenly the crow flew high and found that the hunter had gone in another direction. All clear. No problem. Oh, escaped. I was having grass in that valley at that time. The hunter tried his arrow on me, but by luck I escaped and I ran very fast. I am a good runner, so it helped me get here. Hmm, we should find a way to get rid of him. All the animals are running for their lives these days. I don't have friends. Will you be my friend? Yeah. The tortoise said, Maybe you can help me teach running fast. But you have already won the running race, tortoise. Everyone laughed. <laughs> <laughs> so, this place will be our meeting place. You come here every day. We can play together. Okay. Okay. One day, they all came to the playground, but they couldn't find the deer. They got scared on thinking what might have happened to the deer. Let me have a look. The crow flew above. Uh-oh! She got trapped! She got trapped near the river! Follow me! Fast! They all headed to the river bank. Then the rat tore the net into pieces. Then the crow came to the scene and said, Hey, the hunter is coming again! Run! Everyone ran and hid in different places, but the tortoise could not. He stayed there unnoticed by putting his head inside the shell. Oh, what happened to my net? It's all ruined. Today's a bad day for me. Uh, he left the net there and walked forward. Then he fell down by a stone. Uh-oh! Wow! It's a tortoise! At least I got this one for today. He took the tortoise from there and walked. What? what? They all got together and found a plan to rescue the tortoise. The crow said, I will fly high and find in which direction he goes. Okay, we will do the rest. The deer and the rat went to the direction where the crow flew. They took a shortcut and got there before the hunter reached the riverside and the deer laid down near the river shore to attract the hunter, just like it's dead. The rat made some noise and ran around the deer to attract the hunter. Oh, the same deer? Today's a great day. Wow! He put the tortoise there and ran towards the deer. When he almost reached there, the deer got up and started running. Uh-oh! What? He then returned back to the place where he kept the tortoise. What? Where is the tortoise? He looked around. Then the tortoise dipped into the water. He became very disappointed. It's a strange forest. I don't understand what is happening. Hmm, tomorrow I should go to the other side of the forest. The four friends came together after the hunter had gone. They stayed together and cheered each other.
If together we stand, nobody can beat us. Three Little Pigs Long, long ago, there lived in the green valleys of the Blue Mountain three little piggy brothers. Bill, Herman, Bobby, and, and, and you! Naughty little things! Yeah, and their mom. <laughs> The mommy got tired of these little piggies. She sat and asked herself, How can I help them learn about this world? Dinner time! They came in, sat in different chairs and started having dinner. Wait! 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 Mommy said. They stopped, stuck. The life you live here is different from the life in the outside world. From tomorrow onwards, you can explore the world and learn something new. They said okay. They started their journey. Remember, wherever you go, make strong houses before winter comes. They laughed, ate, wandered and slept long hours. One day, there was a strong cold wind and leaves started falling. Season changed. Oh, it's winter! Bill said. They got shocked, hugged together and lied under a bush. You remember what mom said? What? About building houses before winter. The very next morning, Bill the Piggy started pulling Herman the Piggy and at the end, Bobby the Laziest. The Laziest one just stopped in between as he saw a man selling straw. He stopped there and said, I don't want to search too long. I will buy straws and make a straw house. You carry on. A straw house? Oh! It won't be strong and how can it help you from winter? And don't forget about the blowing wolf. No, it's okay. I don't want to search for too long. I am tired. This hay will do. You go ahead. Okay. The others started walking. Bill and Herman are still in search of materials to build the house. Looks like Herman also got tired. He then stopped a little and said, Hey, a wood shop is here. I only need a wooden house. I don't want to walk too long. The wooden house will work for me. Okay, but what about the blowing wolf? He cannot do anything to my house. You go ahead. He bought wood from there and started building the wooden house. But Bill continued his journey and found a brick shop and started building a brick house. They all finished working on their houses. Oh, it's finished! Uh-oh! Knock knock! What? Who is that? I am the big wolf. It's so cold outside. Will you let me in? No, 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 no! I won't! Okay, I will then huff and puff and blow your house down. And he took all the breath up and blew at the house. All the hay got blown away and the house was thrashed. Bobby ran and ran to the wooden house. Hey! Herman opened the door and asked, What happened, Bobby? The wolf is coming to eat me! Knock, knock, the wolf said. If you don't let me in, I will huff 
and buff this wooden house. No, no, we won't! The piggy brothers replied. Hmm, angry big wolf puffed. Foo! All the plants tumbled down with a crash and fell on the piggies. And then the wolf barked at them. They ran and ran to Bill and ran into the house and closed the door. A, a big, big bad, bad wolf, wolf is, is coming, coming, said the little piggies. Bill became angry. Knock, knock, knock. Is that the big bad wolf? asked Bill. Yeah, wolf replied. I won't let you in as you scared my little brothers. Okay, then I will huff and puff your little house, piggy. The big bad wolf took all his breath and blew the brick house with all his strength. But nothing happened because the brick house was too strong. Big bad wolf tried and tried, but the brick house stayed strong. The big bad wolf became very angry. He found the chimney and just jumped in. And then the piggy brothers put out the fire. Foo! He screamed and climbed the chimney with all his strength. But his tail caught fire. He cried and ran and never came back. The piggy brothers laughed and enjoyed the night in that strong brick house. Hard work always works. works. The weak billy goats and the troll. Goats eat grass all the time, in the morning, afternoon, even in the evening. This is the story of three goats who were brothers. A small brother, a medium-sized brother, and a big brother. Goats like grass very much, like we all love muffins. One day, they saw there was grass on the other side of the mountain. They had thought of exploring that side too, as they had eaten all the grass on their side. But there was a wooden bridge between the two sides, and there lived a troll under that bridge. What will they do? After thinking a little, the little billy goat started crossing the bridge, put his foot on the bridge, trip, trap, trip, trap, with the wooden bridge. Who's that tripping over my bridge? roared the troll, and he jumped out of his place and sat in front of the little billy goat. The little billy goat said, I'm just a little billy goat, and I'm going to the other side of the mountain to have some grass. Oh no you don't. I'm going to eat you now. I am also hungry. I didn't have my breakfast. But I I'm just a little billy goat. Why don't you wait for my brother? He's much bigger than me. Hmm. Yeah, you can eat him for both breakfast and lunch. Hmm. Okay. The little billy goat jumped with joy and crossed the bridge. And the troll started sleeping under the bridge. Now it's the turn of the middle-sized billy goat. He started crossing a bridge. Again the bridge went trip trap, trip trap. Again the troll jumped onto the bridge. Who's this tripping over my bridge, he roared. The medium billy goat, terrified by seeing the giant troll. It's only me. I was following my brother, the little billy goat. No you don't. I'm going to eat you for my breakfast and lunch. Oh no, please. Wait for my big brother. He's much, much bigger than me. You can eat him for the whole day till night. Hmm, really? Okay. The troll dreamed of the big goat and just slept on the bridge. The medium-sized goat tripped over the bridge. Now whose turn? The great, strong billy goat. The big billy goat started walking Trip trap, trip trap. Again, the troll heard the trip trap sound. 
he jumped with joy and said, Yeah, my feast is coming. I'm going to eat you now. Then the bigger billy goat ran towards the troll saying, No, you don't. I've got two big spears. I will crush you to bits and pieces. And he flew at the troll and knocked him down, catching him up in his horns and tossing him into the depths of that tall mountain, never to be seen again. From then on, anyone could cross the bridge and enjoy the sweet green grass. And the three billy goats happily lived ever after eating sweet grass in the morning, afternoon, and even in the evening. The Monkey and the Crocodile Once upon a time, deep in the jungle, there was a curious little monkey who lived in a rose apple tree by the side of a river. He plucked and gulped and plucked and gulped the rose apples whenever he feels hungry. One day, a crocodile came out of the river and swam up to the tree. Seeing the rose apples, the crocodile asked the monkey, Hey, little monkey friend, I am so hungry. Can you share some apples with me also? The monkey said, Oh, yeah, sure. Happy to help you, my friend. And the little monkey offered him a handful of rose apples. Having eaten so many sweet apples, the crocodile said, You are so sweet, my dear monkey friend. Monkey replied, Just like the rose apples? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they laughed and laughed and became good friends. From that day onwards, the crocodile comes to the monkey's place every morning and they share the rose apples and chocks. One day, the crocodile asked the monkey for a little more apples for his wife as a surprise gift. Monkey helped him to wrap them in a big leaf bucket. Crocodile happily took those apples to his home. Crocodile's wife enjoyed all the apples and asked her husband, You know, my dear, the apples are so sweet that I couldn't stop thinking about the delicious heart of that monkey who eats these rose apples every day. Can you please get him for our dinner, dear? I really want to eat his heart. Can you please? Crocodile became sad. But he agreed to get the monkey as his wife started crying. He went back to the monkey's place and he invited the monkey to his home. The monkey happily agreed. The monkey said, I am very excited, but how can I come to your place? I don't know how to swim. Then Crocodile said, Do not worry little monkey, I will carry you on my back. Oh, Okay, he jumped with joy and they started their journey to the crocodile's home. When they reached the middle of the river, the crocodile said, Hey, my dear monkey, I am so sorry to say, but we are going to have you for dinner tonight. My wife really likes to have your heart. I couldn't change her mind. The monkey got scared and felt really bad about the friendship he has made. But the monkey was a clever one and he thought of a way to escape. He said to the crocodile, Oh, crocodile friend, you should have said that before. We monkeys keep our heart in tree holes. Now we have to go all the way back and get my heart from the apple tree. Oh, is that so? Okay, then let's go. They returned to the river bank to get the heart. As soon as they reached the river bank, Monkey jumped and climbed up to the rose apple tree and said, How can someone keep their heart out of their body? Are you that stupid, Mr. Crocodile? Crocodile felt ashamed and sad about his actions. 
When the crocodile turned back to the river, monkey said to the crocodile, Never ever cheat a friend for anything in the world. Once upon a time, there lived a rooster with a beautiful long tail. He lived in a tree along with his friends. Every morning, he comes outside his nest and calls. And his friends too. A wandering fox heard the calling from a long distance. Oh wow! A rooster! Yum yum! Where is it coming from? He then ran fast towards the site where the rooster was calling. When he almost reached there, he hid under a bush and looked. He saw the magnificent tail of the rooster sparkling in the morning sunshine. The fox said to himself, Oh boy, what a spectacular view! Saliva dropped out of his mouth. How can I get that rooster as it always stays on that tall tree? Mm, I shall find a way to get him down. <laughs> the fox started thinking. Oh yeah, got an idea. He just walked out of the bush towards the rooster, cleared his throat and said. <clears throat> oh, hi rooster, how are you doing? The rooster looked at him and said, Hello fox, I am doing great. How are you? Oh, fine, fine. Fox walked a little, turned towards the rooster and said, Are you coming for a morning walk? <laughs> morning walk? With you? <laughs> Have you ever heard about a rooster go morning walk with a fox? Are you inviting me as your breakfast? Rooster laughed. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you hear about the proclamation of the king lion? Proclamation of what? I didn't hear anything. From today onwards, the bigger animals won't eat the smaller ones. Animals and birds will not kill one another for food. Even bigger fish won't eat smaller fish. Rooster said. <laughs> oh, really? Fox said. Yeah, <laughs> so I thought we could be friends and go for a morning walk. The rooster was a clever one. He knew that the fox is making stories. <laughs> so he decided to trick him back and teach him a lesson. Oh, okay, all right. Rooster said. <laughs> Wait a minute. I can see a group of friends of yours coming from afar. Maybe you will enjoy their company more than us, roosters. And turned towards his friends and smiled. Oh, really? Who are they? A group of hounds. What? Hounds? Fox got scared and started running here and there to find a place to hide. But he couldn't find a place. The rooster said loudly, Why are you running? They won't hurt you. You are smaller than hounds. He couldn't stay there anymore. He ran into the dense forest. The rooster laughed at the fox's stupid strategy. All the roosters relaxed on the tree and cheered the rooster's humor. The monkeys and the dragonflies It was a sunny day, too sunny. 
too hot. Seems like the sun is very, very angry. But it seems the monkey is having a nice time. Oh, they have lots of bananas and mangoes here. Wow, all ripened orange mangoes. Yum, yum. I mean orange colored mangoes. <laughs> They are enjoying the fruits and playing music. Looks like they are happy. Then, who else is struggling on this hot sunny day? Whoa! Whoa! It crashed! A dragonfly? What happened, dragonfly? It's too hot. I was returning from the berry land and just crossed the river. Got some shock from the sun, I think. Oh! I can't fly anymore. Okay, you don't need to. <laughs> but you cannot sit here in our mango tree. You go and take rest somewhere else. It's our place. We don't like small and weak creatures sitting in our place and crying. The dragonfly tried flying. But she just fell down to some leaf and from there she fell onto another leaf and finally took rest on a sunflower and cried upon the monkey's act. The monkeys continued making fun of her. After a little while, she went to her place, the lotus land. Hey pal, what happened? You look so tired. Your wings also discolored. Everything all right? No, not all right, she said. She told him the story. What? Why do they do that? This is injustice. No creature has the right to say something like that. Every creature has the right to live and stay in this world. We should question this injustice, otherwise they will do this to every weak creature. Let's talk to the king and let him decide. King, I have a problem to share. Kindly listen. Tell me, king said. She told the king what happened there when she returned back from Berryland. Hmm, I will send them a message. Don't worry. Thank you, dear king. They replied. The king sent a message to the monkey king. Sir, the monkeys in the mango land treated one of our dragonflies so badly. She was tired at that time. Not only did they not help, but they also kicked her out without letting her take some rest. It is injustice. Hope you will look into this and say sorry to her. And finally, please don't let that happen again. If you don't consider this, we will fight until we win. Dragon King What? The Monkey King laughed. How come these small creatures have the courage to send me this message? We are not going to say sorry. Let me see what these silly creatures can do to my troops. <laughs> the monkey blew to the dragonfly Foo. and said, Go and let your king know my reply. Okay, let's show what we can do then. Dragon King told his troop. See, I will tell you a secret that will help us win the war. And then they flew to the mango land. The monkeys were ready for the war. They came with heavy sticks. Then the monkey king shouted. Strike these silly creatures! 
When the king dragon heard this order, he ordered his troop. Let's do it now. Dragonflies jumped and sat on the foreheads of their enemies. Then the monkeys began to strike the dragonflies which were sitting on the foreheads of their friends. The dragonflies jumped and sat and jumped and sat on the monkeys foreheads. As they were so quick in their moves, it was so easy for them. The monkeys struck each other and put each other in great pain. Some broke their legs, some got blue eyes and some got bumps on their head. And finally they lost the war. The foolish monkeys put their heads down and returned to their mango tree. And the dragonflies laughed and celebrated their victory. Please like, share and subscribe.